This video will give you a better understanding of how to shade with your mag. We're going to be using this eye as an example. For my machine, I'm using the Mast Arena Nimbus 3.5mm stroke. I have the critical universal battery to power the machine. For needles, I'm using the Napoleon cartridge by Kin Tattoo. Links to them will be in the description. The first motion we are starting off with is the backstroke motion. In order to best understand this, you must see your mag as a brush. The skin is the canvas and the ink is the paint. Backstroke is you dragging your mag from the top down towards yourself, slowly adding layers of ink as you do this. This motion is fundamental to me getting smooth shading. Creating even tones and transitioning to darker tones is easiest with this motion. Second most used movement for me is pendulum. Pendulum is when you swing the needle back and forth over the skin. This allows you to enter and exit the skin in a continuous motion. I typically use this in very short motions to fill in small areas. Stagnation is your enemy when you're shading in small areas that you want to be an even tone. Pendulum allows me to continuously move my mag in these small areas and still keep everything smooth. It works great in large areas too, but oftentimes you'll need to couple it with this motion. I call this crescent. This motion is what you use in conjunction with the other movements. This allows you to add curvature to your stroke. So if you'd like to combine backstroke or pendulum with this motion, it's very effective when you're going around areas that are round. Or if you want to help guide yourself with shading an area that needs to accentuate a curve. Now that you know this, the next step would be to practice these techniques over again until you master them. This next part of the video, I will use clips from my shading mastery course to give you guys fundamental pointers that's helped me achieve the results I have now. Um, the edge of the eye, when you get close enough on it, you see that it's not a hard line. It's, it's a soft, um, very short taper between the white of the eyes and the edge of um, the iris of the eye. So I'm just gonna go and do little backstrokes tiny backstrokes. We want that looking real nice and soft almost. If I had the mag flat, it would it be impossible to get that curve because the mag's is wide as the eyelash. So we want to tilt it and use that corner. Now, if you're doing a portrait, the eyes aren't gonna be this big obviously so i wouldn't do use a mag for the eyelashes if we're doing a regular portrait because that you'd still you need a lot more precision because the lashes would be much smaller so i would take a single liner or a three round liner tight and do do similar to what i'm doing here if you're doing the whipping back from this point so i'm backstroking the here stop here whip back out lightest wash is like a one drop and we're just gonna shade this in a little bit using the backstroke motion doing a little cross hatching so I don't want those mag marks to stick out super hard I think that looks really nice now when you're working on fake skin you're playing a different game than you are when you're working on real skin. So I'm gonna show you some other clips that I have here working on real skin to help you understand better. Be conscious of where you are placing your wrist. So I pivot my wrist a lot, that way I can control the motion with my fingers. Cause I talk about using your wrist a lot or not using your wrist a lot when pulling lines. But when it comes to shading, this is quite the opposite. You kind of want to use your fingers and wrists for motions like this when you're going around curves. So as you can see here, I'm starting from the edge of this piece where a shadow is cast and I'm pulling back from that direction. So I'm just dragging that needle away from the area that is darkest so that way I can taper off to a lighter point. Now here again, you will see me pivot my elbow and that way I can strike this at a different angle. So that way I can maintain control of my mag 
and easier maneuver around the tattoo. You don't want to overstretch the skin because this will cause the bag lines to be very harsh. So get a decent stretch, but don't get anything that's making the skin extremely tight and tense. With experience, you will learn that with each tone and the saturation level and how it heals in different skin tones. If you're doing this properly, then your pieces should be about the same tone they were when they were first done. Before you master the technique, understanding lighting and where to put the darkest points is critical. Here's some of the secrets that I share inside of the course regarding that. And now the highlights come forward too because the background doesn't take away from the skin tone because anything that you don't shade is going to be the natural highlight. The skin tone is, will be unless you add white, but there's only so much white you can add. So soft light and hard light are basically what the image here explains. You have a hard light that creates hard, sharp shadows and you have a soft light that creates much softer, smoother shadows. So if I bring the exposure up, and bring the highlights down. Read that separation. So I might not tattoo like this, but at least I have a good idea of the overall shape of the highlights on the face and how it's structured. And then this one here. So apart from these patterns here, you wanna pay attention to curves. When, when you, the eye see curves, you're telling it that it's, it's round, it's not flat. That's all about, that's what depth's all about, is telling the eye that things aren't completely flat. The areas in red that I outlined, these are the areas you wanna pay attention to the curves of. So see how, you, you make sure you don't want this to be flat. You want it to have a sort of curve to it because it's telling the eye, okay, this part of the tiger is round. That's, that's what the eye sees. The, key highlights you want to pay attention to on the line, okay? So, and also, just like how human eyes, we have this shadow cast by the eye I was talking about earlier. That's the same thing here. So make sure you capture that too. And then of course, the edge here. See this curve? Make sure you're capturing that curve. And you're telling the eye, okay, this is how this is shaped. 